Well, I'm pretty disgusted because I just spent about 15 or 20 minutes recording the eighth installment of I Was For Sale. Um, and I don't think, I don't think it recorded. Um, I'm not even sure that I want to reread it because I'm not feeling well and I'm very shocked um, about some recent developments in connection with this book, both versions of which are unauthorized. I suggest you look at a new website called, I think it's www.creationbooksfraud.com. If any of you can um, help Mr. Clark track down um, James Williamson of Velvet Creation Books, please do so. Apparently I'm not the only writer who's been harmed, which I have heard from others over the years, but this is really bad. And apparently he's hiding out in Thailand or he's in Bangkok or something which is where a lot of nefarious men end up. It's really disgusting. I feel sorry for Thailand. Um, don't buy this book from anywhere, especially not Amazon.com. I wrote to them in 2010. I have clips up about this on YouTube. I wrote to them and said, both editions are unauthorized. Year after year, I continue to try to find a lawyer to represent me in this against Velvet Creation Books and Green Candy Press, who had a mail drop address in San Francisco, but I think the man owns an electric motor repair business around Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, or did. Um, and this book is selling for 40 to $50 now on Amazon.com and uh, I know that Green Candy Press promised me, I think it was in 2005, that they would shred any remaining copies and Amazon has never answered me. You know, the arrogance of these people is, is just it's just really disgusting. Um, I never got a penny from this Velvet Creation books thing. I never approved the galleys. This was not my title. It was James Williamson's title um, for a book by Patty Powers, and he said that she couldn't write, so he had this good title, so this was the title for my book. And then when this came out, after about four years of negotiating this thing, um, Williamson apparently sold my manuscript without my knowledge or consent to Green Candy Press, who butchered the manuscript further. Um, the original photos for this, they couldn't use them. They said it was too expensive. So I had to do a complete rewrite, which I had offered to do. I delivered everything on deadline, the first time and the rewrite. But then this Green Candy Press book comes out, and the manuscript is even worse. It bears little resemblance to what I wrote. It's got my name on it. I did copyright both editions, and I've been looking for years, more than a decade, to find a lawyer who is competent to defend me in this. And if you have any information about James Williamson, who is apparently from Plymouth, England, associated with the group Primal Scream, the British group in the 80s, who used the name James Havoc, and um, apparently Primal Scream did some publications also. And in one of them, Williamson's real name may be mentioned. And he inherited some money from his family, perhaps, and owned a flat in Hove in England. Um, please contact Mr. Clark at creationbooksfraud.com. Now, I will... I'm really tired and I don't want to do this, but I will read you just a little bit more. Chapter 3, The Professor. I was introduced to the professor, who worked as a dean at a very prestigious New York University, by a writer, junkie, film buff, Wall Street systems analyst, I knew, who kept hounding me 
to introduce him to filmmaker Kenneth Anger. I worked with Kenneth Anger at my job in the Fine Arts Institution, so had his home address. I typed up his royalty statements and mailed him his royalty checks. I refused to arrange a personal introduction, but offered to forward a letter to Mr. Anger. Mr. Anger responded to the letter, and they eventually met. In gratitude for my forwarding the letter and facilitating the meeting, I was introduced to the professor. They had met at Movie Star News, which was still on 14th Street in those days. They were both rifling through, of course, the bondage photos. The writer said something like, do you want to meet a real bondage model for hire? The professor, whose name is Fred, said, yes, of course. A meeting was arranged at the Hunan Taste Restaurant on 2nd Avenue near St. Mark's. My friends referred to it as the human waste. It was a Tomain palace. The moment we met, Fred recognized me, the girl in all the peep shows up on 42nd Street back in 1980. He smiled and nodded. Hungry shark. Me, shark bait. We ate a simple Chinese meal, and it was arranged that the writer would escort me to Fred's house in Chappaqua on the Metro North train. The writer was to receive round-trip train tickets and about $40 finder's fee. I was to receive round-trip fare plus $75. I was very young, maybe 23. My first marriage to Wolf was already going sour. I was beginning to figure out he was a junkie. All right, I'm going to stop now. I've had a, a, a hard winter. I have a lot of uh, things going on with me that I don't put on YouTube. I cannot for legal reasons. A lot of heavy, heavy, heavy things. And um, seeing that there's a website about all the many, many writers and artists who've been defrauded by James Williamson and allegedly defrauded by James Williamson and Velvet Creation Books really, really shocked me. It brought back a lot of bad memories. A lot of very, very bad memories. So thank you for waiting and I'll try to do another one as soon as possible. I've been feeling slightly better over the past couple of days. I'm taking a seasonal tonic, which they do here in France. They don't take vitamins and supplements every day of the year. They, they consider that weird, and I agree with them. But um, it's just been a really, really hard, hard winter, and I'm up against a lot. And um, I wish someone, someone were here to help me and defend me. The last person who was supposed to do that um, really let me down. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.